my plan for today was to get Studman finally saddled. It does look like there is some weather that's going to hit us this morning, so I might do some refreshers with Scarlet first. It doesn't look too bad until we get over here, and this is headed right for us. The saddle is in here for Studman, but if Scarlet is doing pretty well today, I might start introducing her to it as well. Hey girl. She was a superstar for the introduction of the saddle pad as well as the Sir single. If you haven't watched that video, I will link it in the description so you can check it out. As you can see, the storm is definitely rolling in, but as long as the weather stays pretty nice and there isn't any lightning or thunder, I am just gonna keep on working today. One of the hardest parts about living in Montana is the weather is extremely variable and I don't have an indoor arena. I could certainly haul my horses to one, but for these early stages of their training, it's just easier if I do it at home. To get Scarlett in the right mindset, I'm gonna give her a quick brush, making sure to get underneath her belly so the girth doesn't bother her at all. When I introduced her to the saddle pad, I used a smaller baby pad and then a larger full-size really fluffy pad. This pad that I'm using today is a little bit of a different kind of pad. It is a foam pad that is really easy to disinfect and wash and it's pretty squishy. The only thing I don't really like about this pad is it is a little bit heavier and sometimes the horses don't really like it. So I'm gonna give Scarlett some extra time just to check it out. It has a little wither relief hole that works as the perfect handle when I'm starting these young horses. This will be a really good test for Scarlett. I'll be able to tell how good of a job I did on her last session. As you can see, she is a little bit squirmy. I think she feels this new pad touching her in a different way and it's freaking her out just a little bit. I'm gonna give her extra time to investigate this new pad. But at the same time, I wanna push her to be a little bit braver around it and see how far we get today. Since she has seen this surf single before and was quite good at it, I'm not gonna to tiptoe around it today. I go ahead and saddle her right up and make the surf single nice and snug. Scarlett just turned two in July, and although I don't have plans on riding her anytime soon, she was going a little bit stir crazy. Since she has gotten so much more brave and outgoing, this is the perfect amount of work for her. Compared to a domestic horse, it is going to take Scarlett a little bit longer to accept a few of these human things on her. Most of the time, Scarlett is in a pretty good state of mind, but she still does flip into that flight or fight mode pretty quickly. She has gotten much more brave, but I don't want to push it introducing the saddle to her first. The Sir Single is really lightweight. It doesn't have any stirrups on it. There are no long dangly straps. It is the perfect first step for starting a horse that may be a little bit on the anxious side or if they're very reactive. Scarlett has gotten really good at this. I did just put the Sir Single on her while she's ground tied, so she's feeling pretty confident in this even with the brand new saddle pad. If anything, she's being a little bit lazy, which is good, except I would like to get rid of some of her extra energy. I'm really happy with how she's able to stay relaxed with the Sir Single on and she's carrying her body properly. It looks like the storm is going to go just north of us, so I might have a little bit longer session with Scarlett today. She does look like she's getting really bored, even though this is a little bit of a new thing for her. When a young horse like Scarlet gets bored, that is a pretty good indication that they're ready for something new. Typically, I like to start my horses with a much lighter saddle. It's just easier on my back, 
but the saddle I know is gonna fit Studman is in the arena and I'm pretty sure it will fit Scarlet too. I haven't measured Scarlet in a while, but she's pretty big for just having turned two. She is at least 14 too. I don't really have any expectations for her today. I am just gonna see what she'll tolerate with me putting this new saddle on her. I start by kind of swinging it up and down so she can see all of the little straps and the stirrups dangling. This saddle that I'm using today is an older cutting saddle, so it's not super heavy. It's probably about 35 pounds. To start out, I am gonna try and place this saddle right on top of her and just let her feel it and hopefully she'll stop and I'll remove it. Unfortunately, she got a little too wiggly and I decided to pull it off. I did not notice this until I was going back through the footage, but you can see a little bit of lightning right there. This would have been a really bad place to stop because I want Scarlett to do just what she's doing here and stand still and accept the weight of the saddle on top of her. When she is feeling a little bit overwhelmed, I am just gonna let her stop and investigate the saddle. After just setting the saddle on her a few times and making sure she can feel the weight, I'm gonna move on to dangling down all of the pieces on that off side. She is still keeping a pretty open mind, but I have a feeling that this next part is going to be a little bit hard for her. I like to do the saddling process in a bunch of little steps, so our next step is gonna be releasing all of the things on the off side. I think this is a little bit easier than just flopping the whole saddle on them at once because it's really hard to get them to stand still if they're gonna be really scared of it. I started taking all of the things down from on top of the saddle and as soon as that stirrup hit her side, she got a little bit freaked out by it. Of course, I would have loved it if she could have stood still while all of these new things were touching her, but I think it's gonna take a little bit slower of an introduction for her. Because Scarlet is so reactive, I am gonna have to train her for every single part of this saddling process so it is a success. I have seen a lot of wrecks during this process and I'm not sure what it is. I think that people just expect to get their horses saddled in one day. A lot of people will just saddle their colts up in one day, which you can do a lot of the time with a good minded, quiet, domestic bred horse. However, a horse like Scarlet that does have a very low fear threshold and has some pretty big reactions when she gets scared is likely going to find that that is too much for her little tiny horse brain at one time. It will definitely benefit a horse like Scarlet in the long run to take it a little bit slow and if it takes me a couple of days to actually get her saddled, that is completely fine. Since she did have a pretty big reaction to all of the little dangly bits on her off side, I'm gonna saddle her from this side and then go ahead and pull the saddle off so she can feel all of those things sliding off of her body. Since she is confident about standing still for that, it is easy for me to just toss the saddle up there and pull it off of her a couple of times until she's used to it. I wanna be realistic with what she can handle today and I don't think I'm gonna tighten up the cinch at this point. She is getting a little bit more squirmy probably because of the weather that we're having coming in. I wanna get her to stand still with the saddle sitting on top of her and then I'm probably gonna end for the day. We had a crazy gust of wind okay, come in and I decided to just go okay. right back in and put the saddle pad and the surf single on her so she could be familiar with something that she already knows before I put her up for the day. This surf single only has to be tight enough to keep the saddle pad on so I'm going to tighten it up just a little bit. I did decide to take her halter off and free lunge her. I would like to get her loping both directions just so she can feel what it's like.
I was able to get her back in a pretty calm state of mind rather quickly. She carried the saddle pad and the surf single around pretty easily. I have noticed that she has a little bit of trouble just carrying herself at the lope both directions, but that should get better with time. Since she has been a super good girl, I'm just going to have her ground tied here without a halter on and I'm going to remove her sur single and the saddle pad. I'm pretty confident that she'll stand still for this. We've worked a lot on the basics, so this is no big deal for her, even though this is the first time she's seen this different saddle pad. With these young horses, especially the scared ones, I really try to make sure that at the end of the session, they are pretty relaxed and not scared of anything. Today, I worked Scarlet for about 20 minutes. The weather does look like it's kind of blowing past. I'm not sure if I'm going to get a chance to work Studman today or not yet. Before I move Scarlet over to the little arena, I am going to give her a quick brush. Again, she's able to stand really still even though I don't have a halter on her and I actually haven't given her very many treats today. I think I've only given her maybe two or maybe three. It kind of looks like this storm is rolling on through so I am going to be able to work Studman today. I caught up Scarlet with no trouble and I'm going to head over to the little arena and put her in there. She sees this sunshade every day but it came unhooked in the wind and it is flopping around a little bit more than usual. She was pretty brave about it until the oh, string well. started whipping okay. in and then she came over to me to make sure that it was okay. She's gotten a lot better about being out in the open and I'm a little bit bummed I haven't hauled her around at all this summer because that is really going to benefit her. It was really crazy how quickly the Season weather girl. turned. It's now really bright and sunshiny out. I am going to give Scarlett some rice bran pellets. She has been growing and I don't think she's been getting enough fat in her diet. So I've got a bunch of these and I'll give her a little bit of a snack. She did get really scared of something and I'm curious as to what it is. I think it's one of these poles that I stepped on as I was leaving. The weed situation around here is getting a little bit out of control. I am ready to go catch up Studman, but I'm going to use this opportunity to desensitize Scarlet a little bit. She isn't nearly as jumpy okay. as she once was, but every once in a while something will catch her off guard and she'll have a pretty big reaction to it. Because she was a wild horse, everything is considered a threat until she figures out exactly what it is. So I'm just helping her with that a little bit today. When I had her turned out this morning, she was galloping around this pen and she cut her foot a tiny little bit. The little silver splotches along her shoulder there are just where I sprayed her to desensitize her. The cut was very small, but since it was on her foot where there's dust and debris, I did put some alu spray on it just to protect it. I was hoping to get a little peek of her teeth today. I'm kind of waiting for her first set of baby teeth to fall out. The first set of incisors do come out when they're around two and a half years old, and she won't be that old until around December, but it never hurts to check. She's being a little bit tight-lipped today, and we do have quite a few months before she should start losing them, so I'm just going to keep an eye on them so I don't miss them. 
the storm does look like it's moved over to the mountain, so I should have perfect weather to saddle up Studman for the first time. For any of you guys that are new to the channel, I bought Studman two years ago. He was an unstarted horse that had some pretty significant changes to his feet. He was foundered when I bought him. Goosey. He did have a very small degree of rotation, so he's been getting therapeutic shoeing and trimming since I've had him. I put these glue-on shoes on a couple of weeks ago and I wanted to see if the pour and pad stayed in. This one, I believe, is the Culper Sulfate pad. The last video I did with Studman, I did some jumping up and down. He learned how to flex to each side better. I climbed on top of him. So before I start with the saddling today, I'm just gonna flex him each direction to make sure that he still remembers that. My training schedule is not normal, so I haven't really done anything with him except basic grooming and picking out his feet since the last video I posted. This will be a really interesting side-by-side -side for you guys to see. I've had Studman for two years and I've had Scarlet for almost two years as well. Scarlet is a wild bred horse off of a reservation and Studman is definitely a domestic bred quarter horse. I did saddle Studman one time when I very first got him, but other than that, he has not seen any of this for the last two years. Since this is our first session, I'm going to go in nice and easy and basically do all of the same things that I did with Scarlet, but as you can see, Studman doesn't have hardly any reaction at all. Granted, I have been handling him for the last two years, but I've been handling Scarlet for the last two years as well. This is pretty much real time, so you can see Studman quieted down pretty quickly for that. For a horse like Studman, who is naturally a little bit more quiet and can handle a few more scary things, I'm going to skip the surcingle and go straight to the saddle. I take a little bit of extra time making sure he is okay with the motion of me putting on his breast collar. The first couple of times I saddle all of my horses, I will put a breast collar on them just to give them a little bit of extra security in case things go awry, the saddle will actually stay on them. A good first introduction to the saddle is always beneficial and I'm gonna do everything in my power to prevent any unnecessary accidents from happening. A worried horse like Studman or a really reactive horse like Scarlet would probably get into one heck of a wreck if they had the saddle hanging halfway on them and they got really scared. I don't like to tiptoe around the saddling process and all of these straps and things, the horses should be able to stand still with them flopping around, otherwise I just won't tighten up the cinch. Studman is doing really well, so I'm gonna go ahead and tighten up the cinch first. After I get that situated, I am gonna do the breast collar, including the little snap that goes in between his legs and attaches to the girth. In the event that the cinch starts loosening up and the saddle slips to one side, the breast collar will prevent it from rolling all the way around his belly and causing a wreck. Studman still is a little bit on the roly-poly side, so I did have to let out the back cinch a little bit. As you can see, he is pretty calm and cool for this whole entire process. He's not scared or wiggling around at all. Because Studman does have some problems being lunged with a whip, I'm just going to release him in the round pen and I'm going to free lunge him today. Studman does a few things that lead me to believe that maybe somebody once upon a time did try and start him under saddle. I don't know if you can tell in the video, but as soon as I move him around, he starts holding his breath and he's kind of prancing very hesitantly around. 
this whole entire time he's holding his breath and he's really nervous about something I am not sure what at this point. With a horse like Studman with an unknown history, it's hard to know how they're going to react because sometimes these horses do not act like a horse that has never been handled before. Typically what happens with the horses that I find in the loose pen is maybe someone buys them and they send them away to a trainer and then they have a wreck or the horse seems like he's going to be too much to train and then they get sent to the sale, which is what happened with Pete. When I went to roll this guy up into the lope, it became pretty evident why he may have been put up for sale. One of the reasons I picked this particular saddle for a stud man is because I had a strong feeling that he was gonna buck. This saddle fits him perfectly. It is not causing him any pain. So the reason that he's bucking at this point is probably just because he's scared. I wanted to make sure that I got him loping again so he could feel the saddle on his body and he would have to take a few okay? more breaths. It only took him a few little laps around the round pen until he was able to finally start to relax a tiny little bit. Just so you guys can see that this cinch is not really tight at all. The back cinch is tight enough so that it's touching his belly and it's not loose enough so that he can get his leg through it. This is actually a little bit looser than I would have it if I wanted to ride him, but because the tree does fit him perfectly, this saddle is not gonna roll around on top of him, even though he is quite a roly-poly horse. Since he did have a pretty big reaction to that, I am gonna try and get him to lope around one more time and see what happens. Although Studman is a little bit scared, he's not so frantic that I'm worried about him running into the fence or jumping over it like I would be if I had saddled up Scarlet today. He finally lopes one more time and ends up being relatively calm. It is a pretty common reaction for a horse that was maybe started a little bit too fast and possibly had a wreck to act the way that stud man did. He is still holding his breath when he's moving around the round pen, but it really is not tight at all. I don't actually think that stud man is afraid of the saddle. I think he might be afraid of a time he was saddled in the past that maybe didn't go quite right. Of course, some horses can act like this the very first time they're saddled, but I do think that maybe Studman was worked with in the past a little bit. It was just probably not the right kind of training for his mind. There is the very real possibility that Studman reacted much more aggressively because he was a stallion when I bought him. I could see a trainer getting him and thinking that he was uncontrollable and crazy and then just sending him on down the road. I do think that Studman is a little bit tougher minded than Pete. Pete is definitely a lot more sensitive than Studman. Possibly because he was a stud during his initial probable training, he is a little bit more equipped to handle his fear. I've done a few videos on working with Studman in the round pen and lunging him, and he is quite afraid of the lunge whip. So I will have to change my normal training routine to accommodate Studman, but it's not a big deal. I can do things differently just to help him learn faster. With the sun out and the storm moved through, I do have a lot more time to work with Studman today. The first time I saddle a horse or put a surcingle on them, I like to do it several times in one session. I have found then they don't have this big build up to some kind of crazy event that happens. It's just another part of their training that gets done over and over again. To unsaddle Studman, I'm gonna start with the back cinch and then the breast collar and then the cinch. 
pretty important to do it this way just in case the horse gets spooked and squirms around you want the cinch to be holding on the saddle until you're ready to actually take it off I am going to walk around stud man just to give his brain a little bit of a reset and then I'm going to go right back in and I'm going to saddle him up like I would any other horse. Pretty interesting that stud man just about fell asleep the second time I put the saddle on. I was having a really hard time getting him to move anywhere. He was still holding his breath. He wasn't nearly as nervous as he was before, but I decided to go get this half of a flag that I have. I usually don't use flags on the horses, but I've got this one laying around that's a little bit different than a lunge whip or a stick and string, which is what Studman is really scared of. I can tell he's a little bit on edge about it, but he does lope both directions without having any fits this time, which is awesome. I'm just going to keep moving him around nice and easy until he comes back to a more quiet state. I tried to get close to him with the flag, but he was really nervous about it. So I decided to go up and give him a little bit of a treat and check to make sure his saddle was still where it was supposed to be. Since he was able to lope around without any bucking, now I'm just going to start to bring him back down and hopefully he'll be able to relax and carry the saddle around and not hold his breath, hopefully. It was really interesting once he started getting comfortable with this whole situation he started doing this little stallion head flip thing that I've noticed he does before typically around dinner time. Once he kind of got with the program and was able to trot around the round pen relatively relaxed I started turning him back and forth just until he kind of calmed down a little bit more. Even though he is being quite lazy, I'm trying to be very conservative with my use of the flag just so I don't inadvertently scare him. He really is doing well changing directions and trotting off without any kind of squirminess around the saddle. Compared to some of the other horses, Studman is kind of a clunky horse and he is not the best mover. He's not a very graceful horse, but hopefully now that he's getting back into work, I will be able to help him learn how to carry his body in a more pleasing fashion. I don't know that his diet has really been working. He doesn't seem to be losing any weight currently, so... This little bit of exercise will really help him get in better shape. I asked him to lope one more time for the day and as soon as he takes a few strides, I let him stop and that is where we're gonna end. All things considered, he did really well today. I'm pretty proud I only had to saddle him twice. He's still a little bit nervous at this point, so I'm going to let him stand by himself and kind of catch his breath. I did just look at my phone and altogether we've just been working for around 20 minutes today. I have this saddled up on the same hole it was last time and you can tell that he's not puffing out his ribs as much as he was earlier. It could just be that he's very sensitive to something around his barrel and if somebody started him and tightened the saddle way too much, I bet he would have never stopped bucking. There's no reason to tighten the cinch up so tight on most of these horses as long as the saddle tree actually fits your horse. 
If your saddle is rolling around on top of your horse, then chances are that it's not because you don't have it cinched up tight enough. It's probably because the tree doesn't actually fit your horse. That has got to be one of my biggest pet peeves when starting young horses is that some people just have some ratty old saddle lying around that they put on all of their colts, but I really try to make sure that for the first introduction to the saddle, these horses have one that actually fits them. You may have noticed that Pete has some scarring along his back what? and white marks, and that is from the very first time he was saddled at the other trainers. Those are not from me. Some horses can, of course, handle being saddled in a really ill-fitting saddle, but the really sensitive reactive ones are going to have a lot to say about it. Training a horse like Studman that has an unknown history but obviously has some problems with their training can be a little bit tricky. My next couple of sessions with Studman will give me a better idea of what may be triggering him to buck so hard. Oops, sorry, I am pretty sure it has to do with maybe when he was saddled by his previous owners and it was just way too tight. Hopefully after a few more good sessions with a properly fitting saddle and one that is not snugged up way too tight, he will be able to be more relaxed about this whole process. When I pull his saddle off for Nobody. the day, he still is in a fairly calm mindset. As you can see, he has not even broken a sweat even though he was pretty exhausted. It has turned into quite a hot day, so while the weather is still nice out, I am going to try and give these horses a few more baths before winter. It's pretty cool to think about how far this guy has come since I got him. For a $300 auction horse, he is a pretty cool dude, and I think once he gets past a few little things with his training that he is going to be a really cool little horse. Typically after a training session, I would have him stand tied for a while, but it looks like there is another storm rolling in. So he okay. is going to go right back out into the pasture with Goose, Big Gus, and Ziggy. And I know a lot of you guys have been worried about Ziggy, but it looks like he is actually starting to become friends with Goose, which is a big surprise. Sometimes it can take these horses a little while to figure out just exactly where they are in the herd. I still am going to make this dry lot a little bit bigger for the winter and of course Siggy does have a stall in the barn if he does need it. But as you can see Goose and him are staying pretty close to each other without any problems at all. Go buddy. Both Big Gus and Goose were very interested in what Studman had been up to while he was in the round pen. I'm trying to be a little bit nicer to my body, so I think I'm going to call it a day. I do have a lot more chores to get done before this storm rolls in. Mm -hmm. Before I put out this brand new round bale, I did strip this entire dry lot so there are just a oh few turds gosh. that Studman could have rolled in. But it looks like he's doing a fine job of getting completely disgusting after his bath. For the most part, these four boys have been getting along pretty well. I have noticed that Studman is a little bit more aggressive to Goose when he's pestering him. It's a little bit odd that Goose has some trouble getting along with the herd because he was raised out on the range. Before he wound up at the horse auction, he did come off of a ranch that is 20,000 acres. So he was definitely turned out with lots of other horses at once. It could be that he just doesn't understand being in close proximity with other horses and how to behave, but it looks like Studman is doing a really good job in disciplining him. Hey buddy. It looks like Ziggy is doing fine. He's definitely getting enough to eat. It may be a little bit harder for him to get along with this herd when I can't turn them out all winter. 
but for now it looks like all of these boys are getting along just fine and I'm not too worried about Ziggy at this point. It was nice that Studman came over to me and wanted a few scratches while I was walking around and checking on the other horses. It's a little bit before dinner time, so I'm not quite sure that these boys know what to do at this point. Gus sees something off in the distance, and I'm really curious Gus. as to what it is. It looks like the neighbor has let out a few cows on a neighboring pasture. Gus seems a little bit on the grouchy side, but that's pretty typical for him. It looks like Studman has found the perfect scratcher for his itchy booty. Even though it is a lot later in the season than I had hoped, I'm really glad to have a starting point for Studman. I'm pretty excited about this guy. I think he'll be super fun to ride once we work out a few of the kinks. Zig. 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 I don't really have enough time to ride Ziggy today because there is a storm coming in. I have noticed in the last couple of days that Ziggy has started to sprout his winter coat. It is getting quite cool overnight and since technically we are in fall now, it's not really a surprise. It's been getting a lot cooler in the evenings and we've been getting some serious weather lately. Parts of the state have already seen some snow. Thankfully not here yet, but it is right around the corner. Since there is a storm moving pretty quickly in, I am gonna turn these boys out a little bit early boys. today. They have really been enjoying the free choice round bale. Good boy, Pete. Surprisingly, Pete has been letting me scratch him almost every day. He will get nervous every now and again and kind of slither away. I think he has really benefited from the free choice round bale. He sometimes gets a little bit lean in the summertime. All these other boys are getting nice and roly poly though. The pasture out here is still looking pretty crisp, but these boys do have quite a bit of grass still in the far pasture to eat. Come on, Stu! Stewie was taking his sweet time to get out to the pasture this evening. I was really surprised to see that Whiplash was just hanging around wanting to get snuggled this evening, which he usually doesn't do. He's usually out with the other horses. Since he's acting so suspicious, I am gonna check his vitals just before I leave this evening to make sure there's nothing amiss. I think that he probably just wants extra dinner and is following me around to see if I have any leftover treats from the training sessions today. Whip. All of his vitals were completely normal, so I think he just wanted a few extra snuggles this evening. I am going to put Scarlet back in the round pen and check on her foot. It really looks fine. It's just a tiny little scratch, but I wanted to make sure I got on top of it. While I feed the horses in the barn, I'm going to give her some extra time to investigate the saddle, and then I will be done for the day. Thank you guys so much for watching and stay tuned for the next video.